Hi and welcome everybody. We're thrilled to have you here at the Dental Access Expo webinar. Um, we're going to be exploring the exciting world of clear liner manufacturing and the role of the workflow management platform, Xflow. Um, I'm, I'm Rosa and the, I'm the digital product manager here at Dental Access and I'm also your host for today. Um, a quick run through of Xflow itself. So Xflow's platform is um, we built it as a result of executing on our vision in helping enable a more seamless and digital workflow for orthodontists and labs alike. Now, this was also a result of hearing about the challenges and gaps that our orthodontists around the world experience when they start embarking on producing clear aligners themselves. Um, so Xflow, it's just not a tool, but it's a solution crafted to streamline and optimize the clear aligner production processes. This we'll get into a little bit more in the webinar later down the track. But before we get stuck in, um, let's take care of some housekeeping. Uh, just so you guys know, this session is going to be recorded. Your microphones will be off just so that we can limit background noise. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to use the Q&A session. So if you click on the icon at the bottom of the screen, it says there's a Q&A icon. You can click on that, you can ask questions, we'll be monitoring that, and then we'll address these questions at the end during the Q&A session. So let's quickly take a look at what we have in store for you guys today. Um, we'll start off with a quick introduction of who we are and why we're here. Then we'll, we'll explore the broader landscape of clear liners in modern orthodontics. And then shift gears to the benefits of producing clear liners in-house and why you should consider taking that control. Um, and then we'll give you tips and hints and how we at Dental Access can help you along the way. So without further ado, um, it's my pleasure to introduce the visionary leader steering the ship at Dental Access, our CEO, Per Quaison. Over to you, Per. Thank you, Rosa, for those words. And uh, thank you also for, for hosting this for us. Um, welcome also everyone from, from my side. Um, I would just like to uh, start off with... Uh, just a few words um, uh, about dental access, um, where we're coming from, and a uh, little bit about our vision as well. So uh, dental access, we founded it around 12 uh, years ago now, and uh, our mission has always remained the same. It is really to, to stay in forefront of digital technology and help um, our customers with, with this digital journey that they embark on. Um, so something that is very important for us as a company, uh, it is really to find custom solutions for, for all our customers, um, which means that um, we're really trying to understand the needs and finding customers that fits them. So as such, we are not uh, bound to, to certain vendors and certain products. We're always on the hunt for what's out there and what can fit our customers. So rather than trying to fit customers into a product, we're really trying to fit find uh, products that fit our customer needs. So that's that's really um, been uh, our mantra all the way along. Um, what we have also found um, during during this this journey, we have always, of course, worked with with different hardwares, different softwares, and and trying to join all the different dots. We have found that we really need to build our own software as well in order to to make this seamless for our customers because. Generally, we see sometimes, you know, we work with one particular hardware from one vendor, another software from another vendor. And, and to make that, that transition and that experience seamless, we actually have to build like a workflow software that, that ties it all together. And that is really what Xflow does that, that Ross alluded to in the beginning of, of, uh, of this webinar. Uh, you will hear, of course, a lot more about that than what it can do. Um, and also a little bit how, how we as a company has, has got into to orthodontics and clear aligners. We, we essentially as a company, we work in all different fields of, of dentistry and digitalizing that, but um, orthodontics has become almost a little bit of a specialty of ours. And we have really um, had a great time um, developing solutions for taking control of clear aligners and also the option to manufacture them in-house. So that's that's what we're going to focus on today. So uh, I will start off 
talking a little bit about uh, the role of clear liners in modern orthodontics. Uh, many of you know this already, um, but just some of the points that uh, may be worth um, revisiting. Um, very clear to us is that um, clear liners have really re revolutionized orthodontics, uh, offering really a more discreet and comfortable alternative to traditional braces. And that in turn has helped us expand the, the demographics. We, uh, we can treat more patients. Um, we, we have better patient adoption, uh, for example, especially in the, the adult population. Uh, which may not uh, accept uh, a traditional bracket uh, treatment. And also, with, of course, with advancing technology, uh, we can also treat more and more indications. Um, we also see, of course, a more increasing awareness, um, again, especially in the teenage and, and adult population. And major brands, of course, have helped drive that awareness um, which, which in turn um, leads to more, more patient flow and, and more patient interests in, in correcting teeth. Um, as well, we find, of course, that, that uh, the orthodontic professionals as well, they're adopting clear liners more and more and, and for a wider scope of type of treatments. Um, so um, this in turn uh, has, has also helped to look into like the technological advancement that's happened. So for example, the intraoral scanning makes the, the first appointment much easier. We have remote monitoring technology to follow the treatments, which has also really helped with patient compliance and, and tracking. Um, and of course, now, which we will talk a lot about, advancements in software and AI has really helped also making the treatment planning um, uh, much, much uh, widely, more widely available. Um, of course, um, the market it continues to grow. Um, in an, even this year, we look at the growth of around 20%, 20-21% year over year. So it, it's growing really, really, really fast. Um, we do see that, of course, um, uh, affordability and accessibility to the product that helps, of course, drive the market. So the more um, key players that comes on the market, that also helped, of course, drive um, the price down overall. Um, what we also saw, of course, especially since around 2017, we saw a lot of, of more players come into the market. Uh, that was when a lot of um, the patents from, from Invisalign expired uh, and, and uh, made it possible to, to compete very strongly in this space. So generally what we have seen, uh, if I may say, uh, we have seen a lot of companies that is essentially more or less a clone of the business model from Invisalign. Um, it all relies on, on the same process that, that you take your scans or your impressions, you send it to another company, they make the treatment plan, they present it to you, and you can accept or make revisions to that plan. And once it's finally approved, then um, you get your aligners sent back to you. So that was really uh, and is the, the most common model. Um, however, um, what we will be focusing on today is really taking control and doing this yourself, either partially or fully. Um, and um, one um, very important point, maybe we should start with this, is compare a little bit the different options. Um, there is, of course, still a lot of advantages with, with outsourcing and using these traditional brands. Um, some of them have a very strong uh, brand recognition overall uh, that can help with, with, with marketing. They normally have a very good training and support network, so it's, it's very easy. Um, uh, they're, they use a lot of, of digital technology already. You could use your, your intraoral scanner. They have access to, to advanced manufacturing technology. Um, and sometimes you can also tap into really a global network of peers. Um, it's well researched, it's well documented. There's a lot of information to be, be found. Of course, also being part of it can help with marketing. They have good marketing material that can be leveraged from. And of course, um, it's very easy to get started. Um, you can essentially sign up, uh, in some cases, do a training course or even an online training course, and you can get started. So it's easy to get going, and you don't have to invest in, in um, any software or hardware, essentially. 
However, if you look, if you turn the turn it a little bit and look at okay, what what is the potential disadvantage? Yes, well, uh, something that we see a lot and and here of course. Uh, a lot from from the customers that had transitioned and, and and doing it themselves is that you are a little bit set when it comes to fees and costs you are, are stuck with different packages so for example if you want to treat a very mild case maybe a relapse or a refinement you're often stuck in 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 fixed packages that ca can be quite cost prohibitive um, whereas of course if you do it yourself you only so to say pay for the alignments that you make and you can control that very carefully um, you do have limited control or production, meaning that it's not up to you what material you use. For example, in the end of the day, we have seen uh, a huge advancement in materials, um, uh, especially the last couple of years. We have seen uh, the evolvement of multi-layer materials. We have seen materials that help uh, keep the force much longer. We have better clarity in the newer materials. Um, and, and that, of course, you cannot uh, take advantage of if you are stuck with one certain provider. Um, also, of course, competition is a point. It, it is become a problem when everybody doing the same thing to a degree. So um, doing it in-house, for example, allows you to differentiate uh, and have a different uh, product. Uh, for example, um, we know orthodontist that, that, for example, likes to combine a stage with a 0.6 millimeter foil and a 0.8 millimeter foil, which means, for example, it's much more comfortable uh, for the patient to wear the tray in the first week before they switch to the 0.8 millimeter. And by doing that, you can, for example, also shorten the overall uh, treatment time um, by increasing the, the the speed of, of, of transition and, and, and rotation, for example. So you have control of this, and I think that's gonna be the main, main topic today on how can you actually take more control. Um, so um, why should you do it? In other words, uh, let, let's continue on this control topic. Um, by having the control, we can do much more customized treatments as well. We could, for example, say that we are only gonna issue um, a handful of aligners and see that that our patient is com having being compliant and 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 tra tracking the treatment and after that we can do a new scan and we can can continue with another set of trays we have really full control of that and um, we can also tap into um, customized attachments elastics buttons and things like that all of that in you in, is in your hands because you control the full process end to end. Of course, also doing it in-house allows for faster turnaround times. So um, you don't need to wait two to three weeks if you want to, and this is really up to you. You could even offer it the same day if need be. Um, really up to, to how your business is set up and what you want to do and not. If the patient loses their aligners or retainers, it's it's very easy to, to, to remake. Um, and over time, you will also see that you have more cost efficiencies, um, especially once you have paid off this initial investment, um, uh, further cases will then directly um, help improve your bottom line. Um, of course, quality uh, is something you can control as well because you oversee every step of the process. Uh, you decide how things are packaged, how things are done. Um, and, and I think, again, knowing that you as a treatment provider stay through the process end to end, just like you do in a traditional bracket or wire treatment, you see every step and you see the patient from start to finish and you have control of the whole process. Um, we see that that should be no different with, with aligners. You, you should control that process all yourself from start to finish. Um, and uh, I, I believe that that is it's one of the major issues with, with established companies where you outsource, they don't see the patient in the end. Um, you do. Uh, and uh, that's why we feel it's so important that you, that you stay in control. Um, finally, also, of course, the brand. Uh, you're building a brand for yourself. So by doing in-house aligners, you can have your customized packaging um, that is uh, supporting and building your brand um, and not uh, just building uh, another company's brand. So all in all, uh, here are some compelling reasons to why uh, do it yourself. Uh, but uh, we have some great success stories that, that uh, of course, we can also um, share with you during this journey.
Um, Rosa, I know that you are a little bit interested in, 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 in what people are doing. So I'll hand the word back to you here. Thanks, Per. Um, yeah, so we'd like to hear from you and whether you've considered in-house production for your clear liners. So I'm just going to pop a little poll up on your screen and you can select your responses to that. All right. So it should be coming up now. Feel free to start popping in your answers. This will give us a really good idea of who we're talking to and how we consider our approach to the webinar to you. So I'll hand this back to really you. Here. Yeah, thank you, Rosa. <laughs> yeah, so the question is yeah, really, ha have you considered in-house production of clear liners for your practice, right? right. Yep. Okay. continue. Um, so we're going to move ahead a little bit and uh, look at the different steps um, for um, producing clear liners in-house. So um, end to end, this is really the journey. Um, we start with scanning. Uh, we go ahead with the planning phase. Um, then we can uh, print uh, either the models or the aligners directly. And depending on what method you you take care, you may also need to thermoform and cut, <clears throat> and finally we treat the patient. So we're going to focus on different these different steps and go into that in uh, a little bit more, more detail. So uh, if we start off with the scanning, obviously um, intraoral scanning has really revolutionized uh, the patient experience here. Um, of course, also in in-house aligners, you can also use traditional impressions. They just need to be digitalized, which also uh, widely available desktop scanners can do. Um, so we can take a, a, um, a traditional impression and, and scan that in and then make it to a, to a digital file. That's possible. However, of course, scanners gives a, a much better patient experience. Um, and these scanners are, are, are today almost like what we say, almost all scanners works today. Uh, they, they have come a very long way and it's very easy to get started. Um, what we say is very important is how we handle the data. That, that's a very critical point. So when you um, scan the patients, most people today, they have connected it, for example, to a laptop, but there is no consideration on, on you know, how the data is stored and, and, and what um, data privacy, data compliance that you need to have. So what we have developed there is, is really um, XFlow as a cloud platform for storage as well. So you can directly connect your scanner, all the data goes into XFlow, and there we store it very safely and secure in your region um, under all the different compliance rules. And you can retrieve this data from any type of computer. You just need a web browser. So anywhere in the world, you can retrieve this data uh, under a secure login. And um, that helps you diagnose the patient. You can do measurements and things like that and see if it's a candidate or not. Uh, but it's also great for, for patient consultations. So it's very easy to show the patient, um, you know, how they look and, and how they could benefit from a certain type of, of treatment. So all this is stored in the cloud. And then from there, we can decide what to do. So we could send this data if we work with a third-party lab. We can, we can transfer that data to, to the third-party lab. Or um, you can also design things yourself from here. So to do, for example, an, an aligner treatment, then um, we generally introduce a CAD software. And these CAD softwares we have embedded directly in the cloud platform. So you don't need to download files and upload files and so on. You click on a button and you can directly start designing. Um, we try also here to be agnostic. So we have embedded uh, two different softwares from SoftSmile and RCAD, uh, who are really like leaders in, in um, uh, uh, treatment planning softwares for, for aligners, but we also, of course, can accommodate third-party softwares here. Um, so you can do the treatment planning yourself, uh, or um, we also have treatment planning services available. So you can get your initial plan done, review it, make changes if you want to. The important point here is that you are in control and you are controlling the final of the final movements. That needs to be in, in, in your hands. Um, 
So what we do here is that from Xflow, as I mentioned, we can launch these softwares, but most importantly, whether we do it in-house or whether we outsource it, you have complete control of that process. You have all the tracking, so you see what happens with each case of each patient, um, where is it, has it been done, has it been, when, when, when is the patient due back, so when does, it, when does the plan need to be ready or, or the production be ready, you see that all in XFlow. And that was some feedback that we got really early on uh, when we were equipping uh, doctors with, with, with scanners and softwares. They lose, lost a lot uh, of, of the traceability, which you know, some of, of, of um, the established aligner providers have. They have a really nice web portal where you can log in, you see all your cases, you know where they are. So it was important for us to build something similar, even if you do it in-house. So under the extra login, you can see where all your cases are and you can also communicate seamlessly. If you choose, for example, a third-party lab, you can communicate back and forth about the case in this platform, do revisions and so on. So once your um, aligner plan is done in the software, whether it's in-house or whether it's um, by an external design service, you will see that in Xflow um, and you can see the 3D plan and you can from here either react the plan, uh, make a revision of it, or, or then later on accept the final plan that you're happy with. You can put in notes here, you can communicate back and forth, and you can also share this viewer with directly with the patient. Um, so you, that can be emailed out to the patient and they can access the, 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 the treatment plan if you choose to do so. Um, as I mentioned, we also integrated softwares directly like ARCAD and SoftSmile. Um, so if you decide to make your own treatment planning in-house, it's just a click of a button, you create the design task and the software opens. So again, no moving of files around, it stays in the same um, cloud environment. Um, also, we spoke now a lot about um, aligners, but, but retainers is something that a lot of our customers start off with. And they normally do that by having the scanner, they have Xflow as a software. In Xflow, we have an AI service that as soon as your scan comes in, we can automatically create the horseshoe model and also apply uh, what we call a trim line. That is the, the blue line you see on the model, and that is used if you have um, some type of automated cutting, for example, a laser aligner cutter that we also offer. So the cutting out is, is done automatically. Um, and this trim line, as we call it, that can be um, uh, adjusted to your liking. So you can have settings if you want a scallop line, if you want a straight line, or even like a hybrid line for example, then uh, scalloped in the front, straight in the back. And you can also set uh, how it should be placed, how many millimeter below uh, the Geneva you want this, uh, this uh, um, or gum line, you want this, this, this streamline set. So all that is, uh, is very customizable in the software. So we have a lot of customers starting off with retainers, printing, manufacturing their own retainers uh, before they start doing uh, the easy, um, aligner cases like relapses, cosmetic cases, and then we see that they gradually take on more complex uh, cases um, here. So this is also a, a really, really great feature in uh, Xflow. Um, so uh, then we have the step of, of manufacturing, um, and there is essentially two different ways of doing this. You could uh, direct print um, aligners and retainers, and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, uh, shortly. Um, or you can go more the traditional path where you first print your models, um, you thermoform the cases, and uh, then uh, finally you cut it either by hand or by some automated solution like the laser liner or cutter that, that, that we have. Um, what is important here is, of course, that you are in control of the material that you use. Um, there's a lot of uh, materials available uh, on the market, both for direct printing and thermoforming. And, and you are able to set your quality standards in, in how this is, is, is done. Uh, but also when it comes to manufacturing, it was important for us to, to embed this process in Xflow so that we can have full traceability. That means that once our production files are generated from either your own design in the software or from a third-party designer, 
you get the files, production files back into XFlow, like your printable models, and they are seamlessly transferred directly to the hardware via integrated interfaces. So again, you don't need to download files and move files around. We talk directly to the printers, we talk directly to the cutters and so on um, within the platform. That is really, really important for us to automate this whole flow from start to finish. Um, so that gives you this traceability also, like what has been produced, what has not been produced. You even have the option to say, okay, maybe I just want to produce my first two, two trays um, in-house, the rest I want to send to a manufacturer. That's also possible here. So you can split the case, what is done in-house, what is outsourced. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in that regard. Um, I mentioned direct printers uh, and, and thermoforming. So still we see that the majority of our customers stay going down the path of traditional thermoforming. So essentially we print our 3D models, uh, we put them into a thermoformer and we can also then automate the actual cutting by using, for example, a laser cutter. Um, now that is widely adopted. Um, it gives us a lot of material options, um, but these foils have developed so much in the last past years, as I said, and is very well documented, it's well researched, all the data is around. However, we certainly see the introduction of 3D printing more and more for, for direct printed aligners. Um, it's possible to do today, it works well. Um, we have also integrated XFlow uh, with some of those systems, so it's possible to print. Um, the aligners or the retainers. However, it is very important to know that there is also other steps involved. So after they are printed, first of all, they're always printed with support. So you need to remove um, the support before you go to the next step, which is then the actual um, washing and curing of them. So you need to have that equipment also. Um, and uh, also, it's worth saying that the material is a bit different. There is a different patient experience. They can feel a little bit more rigid um, because we have to print a certain thickness. Um, but the important point, it is definitely possible. Um, what we see today that it's done more for smaller volumes, so small cases, retainers, things like that. But for higher volumes, we still have more cost efficiencies in going down the, the thermoforming path. Um, but talk to us here. We are very happy to consult on this. We're doing both. We have experience with, with, with both processes and can really tell you what the pros and cons are of, of uh, both workflows. Important is to be open to it and, and have access to the latest technology. Um, I talked a lot uh, during, during uh, uh, this so far about the importance of, of a workflow platform. Again, that is to connect all the different pieces. Um, so we connect, of course, our scanners, whether it's desktop or internal scanners into the platform. We embed the treatment planning software so you don't need to move files around. Um, and also we connect the manufacturing equipment, the 3D printers, the laser cutters in there so that we have full traceability of actually what is going on. Um, in addition to that, we also have services embedded. So we have AI technology, for example, to help segment the cases before you do your treatment planning. Um, we also have AI to automatically create models, as I mentioned, for, for retainers, so that um, you don't need to do any manual designs for retainer that's fully automated. And of course, we also attach uh, service providers such as treatment planner designers in here that you can use as well as manufacturing partners where you can outsource. For example, if you are starting out and you don't have your own manufacturing technology, or if you have peaks in your production or you have some problems with your technology, there is always outsourcing partners that you can use. But uh, one thing remains the same. That is that you always have control of the entire workflow, whether you do it yourself or whether you're outsource. You are in control. Um, in addition to this, um, we also have um, uh, um, the different parties. So we have, of course, all the different services, all the different hardware connected to, to XFlow, but also it allows um, you to interact with all the different parties involved. So first of all, we have the patient, right? Where we're doing our scanning, where we're doing initial consultation. We have um, 
of course, uh, the doctor keeping track of all the cases, raising the orders that is needed, accessing uh, tools like treatment planning softwares in there, um, working with a lab. Um, if that's what they choose to do, they can track and, and order and, and communicate back and forth with the lab. And if they start to go into in-house manufacturing, as I mentioned, then also all the, the hardware will be, be um, integrated and, and traced from here. And finally, we also have remote monitoring technology so that uh, we can track uh, the progress of the patient. So the idea here is really to create one platform for everything that you shouldn't have to move between different platforms. That has been our um, uh, absolute mission in this. Um, so with those words, Rosa, back to you. I know that you're going to put another uh, question up. Yes, okay. So um, just quickly, dental at Dental Access, we, as you can tell, we do strive to understand and learn about our customers better. And no, no one person or practice fits a certain mold. So I'm going to run another poll here. And I know Per has taken us through the various steps and ways we can produce clear liners in-house. But which stage of the clear liner workflow do you find the most intriguing and, and or challenging? So if you can just select that, it'll be really, really nice. And um, feel free to make your selections on the poll whilst we continue. Back to you, Per. Thank you, Rosa. Okay. Um, let me just shift the slide here. Uh, we will talk a little bit about business considerations. Um, this is a very individual topic. And um, as you mentioned also, Rosa, we really try to, to understand our customers um, what their today look and but also more importantly how do they want their tomorrow to look like and how does that transition and that journey look like that is something that we're trying to establish together so when we're talking about the business case and and the return on investment we're trying to understand things like how many cases do you do per day or per month uh, rather um, and uh, you know what is the current ongoing costs what is the labor cost that is involved and so on and then we compare that with what it takes to do it in-house um, so for example of course they would especially if you manufacture in-house there would be an upfront um, investment in this that we try to to calculate very carefully on, and even coming up maybe to a leasing monthly cost that one can expect to to have the technology in-house and then of course we have a variable cost um, because we have things like consumables so like the foils the resin and also of course the labor that it takes to to produce this so we have a fixed and a variable costs and then we can quite easily determine um, where the break-even point goes. Um, and again, it's individual for each customer. But what I could say is that generally we could see that even in two to three cases per month, so per month, month uh, could actually be beneficial to do it in-house, um, just from a pure economical standpoint, because you are not linked to these fixed packages. Um, you actually only pay per aligner essentially when you do it yourself. So we normally sit down and we consult in this process. We work very closely together with you and uh, we come out with essentially a business calculation and business case to see when it's worth um, doing this and what the costs are. Uh, so again, um, if, if you're interested in any of these, reach out to us. Um, we normally set up a first consultation together uh, fully obligation free, um, where we look at at the business and and see whether this is uh, viable or not, and and we give you access, access of course, all to to all the numbers as as well. So um, other than consulting you and looking at the business case, how can we really help you here? Well, so normally how this process looks is that um, let's say we have come to the conclusion that. Um, you want to set up your in-house lab. Um, what does it take? Well, uh, of course, there is um, uh, different types of technology. We sit down with you to understand, you know, do you have any 3D printing, for example, already that can be integrated or do you require new 3D printers? In such case, you know, what capacity do you need? 
um, what is the differences between different 3D printers, what is important to think about when it comes to accuracy, of workflow, um, and so on. And um, uh, once we have, have set that up, um, we look at also like, okay, how do you produce your actual aligners? Um, of course, thermoforming is one option, direct 3D printing is another. Um, if we do a thermoforming, do we need some type of automation when it comes to the cutting? Because that's normally the most labor intensive component. So when does it make sense, for example, to introduce like a, like a laser line cutter in this? Um, and, and we go through with some samples so you can really feel. We can also, of course, help setting up uh, reference client visits where you go actually and see how others are doing this and can get a feel for the quality and get a feel for how this has changed in, in other practices and labs. Um, then also we look at the consumables that is needed. So for example, resin and foils, what are the different options on the market? Uh, what are the costs involved? Uh, what, what are the, the features of the benefits of different materials? This is something that we also um, discuss a lot together. One point um, that is, is really, really important, that is um, how scalable is this solution because it might be that that you start off with just let's say um, retainers and and uh, and maybe do small cases um, uh, in the beginning, but you want to have the ability to scale this up. You want to be able to maybe produce 100% of your clear aligners in the future. If that's the case, we need to take that in consideration from from day one so that you really have a scalable solution that you can ramp up uh, production without necessarily not have the, the full outlay from the beginning, but that you have a scalable platform which you can, can grow in. And probably most important here, that is of course to have access to, to, to experts, having uh, good training and education, uh, a professional setup. That's really our, our uh, key focus. Uh, so we do a really professional handover um, that you can reach us 24 hours a day uh, if you have any urgent issues. But of course, also putting you together with um, a professional KOL network that has done this before, where, you, where which has gone through some of the hurdles and can help you along the way. So uh, we can help you not only with, with those technical questions, we can also help you with direct clinical questions if need be through our um, partner network. And the final point I have here, um, also regulatory and compliance is really, really important. So we ensure here that, that um, you will only be using materials that is fully regulatory approved for its indication in each market. We also look at things like data management, data handling to make sure that that's safely stored and compliant, um, packaging, sterilization, all those guidelines, that is things that we can help you with. So really look at us as a, a one-stop shop for everything in-house clear liners. We certainly have a lot of experience in it. Um, and uh, we have learned uh, both what works and, and what doesn't work essentially on the market. Um, but it definitely is a journey, um, something that... Um, that we say is that don't don't try to do everything at once. Uh, that could be uh, very, very challenging. So we like to see this as a little bit of a step-by-step -step approach. So we have a lot of customers, um, they may just start with actual platform, connecting their scanners, um, using services for treatment planning and using um, outsourced services also for, for manufacturing. But with one big difference, that is that they stay in control of the entire workflow. They have access to the CAD software that the designers do. They can make changes to the treatment plan and they can also decide what material they want to produce the case with. So importance here again is to, to making that step to taking control of um, the, 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 the case. Um, as a next step, um, could be then, for example, to, to start designing all the cases directly in-house. So we help then, of course, we train and integrating the CAD software, um, how to, to do all the movements and, and um, how to do the staging and all of this. Um, 
And you can start with just designing and still outsourcing. That's, that's fully fine. Or you can say, I'm just going to produce again, like the first couple of steps. The rest I want someone else to take care of because I have limited resources to do it in-house. That's definitely something we can, can assist with as well. And once you're ready to do it all in-house, all manufacturing in-house, uh, we can certainly consult you on all that um, and make sure that you are, are, are well set up um, for the volume that you're expecting. And of course, also take care of training uh, in that regard. So this is really something that we see step by step. Um, finally, of course, we make sure that you really invest in the right solutions um, that will enable growth also in the future, that you're not stuck, that you're just getting you know, uh, printers, for example, for a very low, very low volume. We want you to really be able to scale this. Um, also, um, I will do a quick recap a little bit about what, what solutions we can help with at Dental Access. Of course, we can provide scanners. Um, we work with both um, intraoral scanners and desktop scanners uh, from Medit and FreeShape. Uh, but we are totally open also to work with third-party scanners. So if you, for example, have, let's say, an existing ITRO scanner or Serona scanner or CareStream scanner, we can help integrate them. And uh, we can also help connect them, of course, to our um, Xflow uh, cloud storage that we talked about so that all your data is uh, safe and secure in, in the cloud. Um, we also have our treatment planning and design services available. So um, if you don't want to do your own designs or if you just want to do, let's say, the final um, setup yourself, we can certainly help with that. So we can do a proposal that you refine or we can make the whole treatment plan for you. Uh, we have design partners integrated in Xflow that you can choose from. And uh, also when it comes to the retainers, we do have AI services that um, creates these retainer designs or the models for the retainers automatically. So that's a one click uh, retainer design essentially integrated in the platform. Um, if you decide to plan yourself, um, we do have different uh, planning softwares um, integrated. Uh, so they are also one click uh, away. Uh, from, from the platform. You just click on it and start designing essentially. Um, but uh, if you prefer and you have your own design software that you prefer to work with, we're also very um, happy to work with that and still integrate, for example, the whole manufacturing workflow that uh, comes after. So uh, again, we're trying to be very, very agnostic um, uh, and, and try to also work with what you have rather than force you into a certain set way of, of working. Um, also in terms of manufacturing, um, we have outsourced partners where you can, can send your cases away or part of your cases away. Um, but we can also help you, of course, with a full manufacturing setup. Um, we have access to um, a wide range of different 3D printers, depending on, on, on your needs, your capacity needs, your volume needs. Um, we have, uh, of course, thermoformers. We have all the different type of foils, um, single layers and multi layers. Um, we have also uh, cutters like the laser aligner cutters, the LAC, um, that allows you to cut the, um, the aligners out automatically uh, with no polishing afterwards. So whatever those needs are, again, we will sit down with you and understand and, and propose you the best solution possible. And uh, my final words in all this is essentially that um, with Dental Access, you can really take control yourself. Um, you decide how to do it and in which order and in which pace you do it. You decide if you want to outsource, or if you want to keep certain things in-house. It's totally up to you. Um, but we strongly encourage you to reach out to us. Let us show you what it takes. Uh, and let us also show you the business case. Um, it may be more affordable than you think. So that's the final words for me. Um, I'm gonna hand it back to, to Rosa again to, uh, to wrap up and maybe some Q&A.
All right, so on to the Q&A session. Just so that everybody is aware, there is a little icon at the bottom of the screen where you can raise your hand if you'd like to ask any live questions during this webinar right now. Um, otherwise, um, I'm, there's a few that I've got here that um, have been raised and I'm just going to ask it towards Per and hopefully we can answer some of these questions. But um, it was very clear from the polls that we, we did today in today's session that either you're considering this yourself and haven't started or you've already just started and you're looking at ways to innovate and change and digitalize your whole workflow. Um, and it's very obvious that treatment planning and the steps in manufacturing is where a lot of the interests the intrigue and the challenges lie, right? So um, a lot of the questions I think will revolve around all of this um, and here are some. So uh, what are the costs to start this in-house manufacturing myself with dental access? So that's one of the questions that came through. Yeah, of course, it, it, it's a good question. And, and it really depends a little bit to what scale, what capacity, and how much automation. Like that, that's, that's like kind of the main factors. So one can set up in-house aligner manufacturing very cost effectively if, if one are prepared to do certain manual steps like cutting the aligners yourself. That could go as low as maybe 10,000 for a very decent, stable printer, uh, still avoiding like the most cheapest printers on the market that maybe only last for, for, for a year or two. So I would say it probably starts around that $10,000 mark. Then on top of that, you can start and add uh, automation. So normally um, the next step is, is um, to look at the actual uh, cutting of the aligners, which, which does require some skills um, if you do it manually. So normally once you start getting some volume, you would like to look at um, some kind of automation around the cutting. Um, we have a laser aligner cutter, which is unique in that once it's cut, it can go directly in the patient's mouth. It's so smooth, it doesn't need any any polishing and that we can only do with laser technology. Um, that would set you off around the 50,000, 40 to 50,000 dollar mark, depending on configuration. So that's, that's quite a steep add-on, but in turn, it saves on a lot of labor and also we need to know that by using an automated cutter, we also have full records on, on exactly how we cut all the liners. It's not down to a person. Um, it's stored and is digitally set. So we can always trace all this back. So the cutting is normally the next step in that, that journey. Um, we also have as customers grow, uh, of course, not for startups, but, but down the track, we can even automate the thermoforming even more if, if uh, one would look into that. So one can also do the thermoforming more automated if, if need be for, for, for higher volume. But a typical startup for us, that would be you know, a 3D printer um, or integrating a printer that already exists, um, uh, thermoforming, of course, and some form of automation when it comes to the cutting. Then we, of course, have the other track, and that, that will be also uh, direct 3D printing. Just to, to mention that, direct 3D printing today, if it's good, uh, you would look at around 20, 25,000 for such a system, um, all inclusive, to do it really well. That's our experience. Great. It seems like a lot of um, upfront costs pay. What, what, do we, what do customers do if it's yeah. maybe no, too I, much? No, of course. Uh, it, it, it could feel like that, but uh, the important thing is to break that down into a monthly cost. So normal, normally all our customers, they end up on some kind of lease plan and it becomes much more manageable because the lease plan is probably for all this equipment that I talked about, it's probably less than one outsourced typical case that you send to one of the traditional providers. It's, it's probably less. So that's why I'm saying that when you break it down like that and looking at the monthly costs, even then when you're taking in the materials and the labor for the case, you only need to do two to three cases per month to really make this worthwhile, even with a fully automated setup for the, for the cutting. So uh, yes, it may sound a lot up front, but it's really invest, an investment into your practice or into your lab because you're taking control and you're doing it yourself. And the more cases you do, it's gonna come back directly on, on, on your bottom line. All right. I have another question here. So would you recommend direct 3D printing aligners or the process of thermoforming and cutting? Is there a preference? 
Um, yeah, so this, this is, of course, a, a very debated question right now. Um, what I hear probably the most is, is actually um, customers saying that, look, I'm going to wait until I can direct 3D print all this. Um, I think it will be quite some time until we're there to do direct print, 3D printing, especially in big volumes, um, because it, it's a very cost-effective process right now to thermoform it. Uh, one also needs to remember that you know, thermoforming and, and plastics, I mean, this has been out in the market for, for many, many, many years. It's really well documented, it's well researched, and we can predict the movements very well. Um, we don't have that long-term data today on 3D printing, and it, it will take us some time until we do it. Um, so the, the bottom line, it, it, it works and it can work, and we have solutions for it. Um, but right now we see that most customers that have volume of some significance, they still look at the thermoforming part because the the the, the cost per part is is still much much lower. Um, I think we will see a lot of advancement in that this field over the next few years. Um, right now, we, there is quite some post processing to do also with the with the printed aligners. Uh, like you need to separate the parts, you need to. To, to cure it and wash it and so on. Um, and and I'm sure also the materials will improve over time. Um, so there will be involvement in that and it might be worth, um, might be worth uh, um, observing that a little bit longer before jumping on it. Uh, that's, that's probably my advice, depending again on the volume needs. But the options are there. Um, and we certainly can can help explain the differences in more detail um, when we meet together. Great. Uh, a few more questions, Per. Um, how do you at Dental Axis ensure you stay ahead in digitalization and innovate to ensure that you have the best solutions for your customers? And how do we ensure that you guys are credible, basically, is one of the questions. I think this is a super important question, Rosa. So um, thanks to whoever uh, uh, placed that question. Um, I mean, this has really been, been our our mantra since, since day one. And I think actually the only reason we are still in business after all those years, that is that we have never tried to um, stick our head in the sand and say we, 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 we have what we have and that's the best. We always listen to our customers, what they want and what where they want to go and let them shape our journey as a company. I think that's the most important point. Um, it's our customer that have shaped our company and, and where we are at today. Um, for example, when we started a business 12 years ago, um, there was no in-house manufacturing and everything was outsourced. And, and we partnered with all these companies that, that provided outsourcing. If we wouldn't have changed and looked into how to do certain things in house, whether it's on orthodontics or, or other areas of dentistry, I don't think we would have had a business today. So, um, what the customer wants is of absolute essence to us, and and that's our mission to find the absolute best solutions around that. So, how do we do it? Um, well, we we listen, of course, to the customers what they want, and then we research the market extensively, and we kind of handpick solutions that we have tested thoroughly that we know that works and we know that can be well integrated in an open environment and in an open workflow. We try to stay away from closed solutions, locked in solutions uh, where you don't have choice because we know that over time there is new solutions coming out and then these, these, um, these products cannot be adopted to that. So uh, yeah, our mantra is uh, try to stay independent um, look for open solutions, uh, well integratable solutions, um, and not least, listen to our customers' wishes. Cool. Thanks for that, Per. Um, AI. So uh, there's a question here around the challenges of AI. Um, it's been on the forefront of a lot of the news right now. A lot of companies yep. are in adapting and adopting to AI. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned today in the, the webinar that the, we, we use AI for our retainers. So like, what are the yep. challenges that you see with that? And, you know, like, how do we get educated on the using, the usage of AI in yeah. our production? 
is a very important point as well. And 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 uh, the essence of this is that we see, at least from 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 in our our eyes, our world, is that AI is a form of support. Um, it's not the decision maker. So we use AI to assist, but we should never ever have AI make, for example, clinical decisions. So, for example, what AI can help with in, in, in the world of orthodontics is, for example, it can help segmenting the teeth, for example, finding the gum lines, which means that we don't need to go through a very time consuming manual segmentation of an arch that may take up to half an hour. Uh, AI can do that very predictable, but we need to always verify the AI result in the end. And that's what all our tools and all our processes allows us to do. So we can check in the end, have the teeth been segmented properly? Do we need to do any adjustments? And if so, we can do so manually. So we need to look at AI as a, as a tool, as an assistant in the process, rather than someone that's making decisions for us. Um, I think this is, this, is, this is very, very important that we don't letting AI do um, decisions for us that you know, we have studied and educated forever as, as, as professionals. Um, it should be a tool and a help and an assistance, not making these, these important um, decisions for us. That's a really good point. Per. I think with AI, from what we've seen, you know, a lot of it is not 100% accurate anyway. So there's mm -hmm. always requiring a bit of quality control yep. in the process, but it yep. does reduce a lot of the turnaround times for a lot of our customers, right? Um, yeah. Last question here, and actually a pretty good one. Uh, do you have any success stories that you can share with us where an orthodontist perhaps, you know, started this process, was very like apprehensive about it and actually turned out to be successful? Yes, many. Um, I think... Um... We try, of course, to stay very, very close to our customers and, and learn a lot from them. And, and then, of course, we also hear the goods and the bads. Um, generally, what I could really say is that I don't know of a single um, practice or lab that's gone back after doing it. I, I really don't haven't seen it. Um, rather we have a lot that said, you know, I'm only going to start doing my, I'm only going to do my very simple cases. I will never do my big aligners because it doesn't make sense. You know, I can get them very cost effective from a big aligner company. Uh, we have seen them transitioning doing, to, to doing 100% in-house. And when I come back and ask them, why, why do you do now 100% and, and not just these simple cases, um, like you said, uh, you were going to do, then the answer is normally that, look, this way, I have taken back control. I can really, really see this case through from start to finish. Like, um, I would, for example, not put my my brackets and my wire bending into someone else's hand. I want to stay in control. I want to treat the patient from start to finish. So, for sure, in the beginning, I just did these simple cases, but later on, I I transitioned into doing also the complex cases, just because the fact I had control throughout the process. I didn't put it in the hands of a third party that, that did the initial treatment plan. And even if I could adjust the outcome a little bit, I, I didn't know what mentality they had and how they move teeth. I have been trained in how moving teeth. That's why I want to have control of the process. So um, I think that is a success story, Rosa. Um, actually, itself, that, that, that we see customers taking on bigger and bigger cases, um, even if the cost benefit is not necessarily the same. If you just look at the pure case cost, it may come back in less refinements because you have a much better control of the treatment. So it could have um, a cost benefit in the end. Um, but I think it's it's about the quality of, of, of the treatment in the end of the day and, and securing um, success with your patients and not just throwing more plastics on them because that's what we see from a lot of the major companies. They just throw a lot of, of, of um, refinements um, until the patient is tired of it and stops, right? Um, with, instead of understanding really what the issue is, if it's compliance, if it's certain movements that is not tracing, that's what you do when you're taking it in-house. You are really, really in control of the full, full process and you understand the treatment much better, just like you do when you're doing a conventional bracket treatment. 
Yeah, we we have been seeing a lot of successful cases with a lot of our orthodontists who do take this in-house because they do take a lot more care in ensuring patients' satisfaction um, and tracking in their treatment, right? So you you do have that visibility. But thanks, Per, for providing these insights to us. Um, we, we hear from our orthodontists around the globe on how daunting this whole process can be and doing it all yourself is quite hard to get into, right? But the key takeaway here for me, at least, is that there are a lot of pros in considering how you can take control. Um, and when you break it down and take it in phases, it is actually much, res much less risky move with a lot more long-term benefits, it seems. And whether you go all in or you start off with a hybrid model, whether whether you like outsource part of that process and then you do some of it yourself, the main goal is patient satisfaction and the flexibility for you and your, your practice. And Dental Access is here to support you in this whole transition. So um, that concludes our webinar series, uh, webinar today, but um, I'd like to introduce that there is more webinars coming up and more deep dives into things like secure scanning, um, you know, we'll look into privacy, cloud storage for patient treatment management, and you hear firsthand from the leading orthodontists as they share expertise, best practices and strategies on how to do this. Then we'll start talking through the treatment planning with a, an orthodontist that does the treatment plans. Um, the clinical designs, tips and tricks, AI solutions for talents, shortages, and you'll get valuable insight into clinical designs and innovative solutions from this training session or this webinar session, sorry. And lastly, we'll, we'll put a manufacturing efficiency um, webinar session together where you can discover strategies for scaling up and reducing costs with cutting edge technology. You can explore the significance of high quality materials in thermoforming for optimal results. And then also you can learn the art of precision with a swift transition from manual cutting to cutting aligners in just 60 seconds. So that's that's our webinar series that's coming up. Um, there is a registration page where you can pre-register for these events specifically. Um, if you go to dentalaccess.com events, then you, you'll be able to pre-register into these ones. Um, and lastly, there are a couple more. Um, and if you guys are all, if anyone is going to the AAO um, in New Orleans, we are also doing an in-person seminar with leading orthodontists across the globe um, who will be coming in and talking about their experience in putting together their own in-house manufacturing workflow, the learnings they've taken, the processes they've taken, what, what you can use to then succeed if you are interested in doing that as well. So um, feel free to register for that also from our events page. And also we've got a sprint day that's coming up in Zurich um, and that will take you through 3D printing and the processes that revolves around that. Uh, so that concludes our webinar today. Thank you for joining us. For more information or questions, please reach out. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn to stay informed and stay innovative. Uh, thanks, everybody.